Hey shooters, welcome back to the Shooters Resource Channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Smith & Wesson MMP10 Optics Ready. Now, I don't know why they say Optics Ready, it's an AR-10, it's very obviously capable of accepting optics, but uh, Smith & Wesson marketing team thought it would be a great idea to put that in there. Either way, this is a great firearm. This is actually the second one I've owned. The first one was stolen by a lowdown crook, never got it back, but I've always wanted to replace it in my arsenal. So I went out and got the newer version uh, that comes with a 16 inch barrel. My old one had an 18 and I have been just like the old one, very pleased with the performance. Before we get started, go ahead and take a second, hit that like and subscribe button, support the channel. All right, let's talk a little bit about some of the features on the MMP-10. Now this barrel comes with 5R rifling. It's one in 10 twist rate, which is pretty standard for the 308. Uh, and it's also 762 by 51 NATO chambered. So uh, you can shoot military rounds with no worry about pressures or anything of that nature. Uh, the total overall length is 34 inches. It's a really handy and lightweight rifle coming in right at eight pounds. It's a great rifle out of the box. It has been shooting sub MOA consistently and we'll look at some of that accuracy in just a moment. Now the barrel itself has an Armonite finish which is just a hardened nitride finish that improves corrosion resistance but also helps with light reflection. That's really important that you don't get a lot of light reflection. A lot of people overlook this both for defensive situations and hunting situations. Now I'm using this rifle primarily as a hunting rifle, but it's also something you could mow the front lawn with if you needed to. about two seconds. That was about one and a half seconds, but it was harder to control. I definitely came off target on that one, though I probably stayed within, let's say a 12 inch circle. And since it's a hunting rifle, I wanted to break up the pattern. So I hit it with this custom rattle can job that really helped uh, in the deer woods this fall. A large solid black rifle just stands out and it's not really great camo. Now, a lot of the hardware on this gun is very cheap, but I went ahead and replaced it. It's got the old school A2 flash hider as well as handguard that I replaced with a Magpul handguard that allowed me to put a flashlight up front. And the flash hider will later be replaced by one where I can run my Silencer Co. 30 cal can once it comes in. The stock on this one, it was just a run of the mill cheap AR 15 stock. I replaced it with a Magpul stock that I had lying around. The good thing with this one is, is it does accept standard AR 15 hardware when it comes to the stock and the pistol grip. The pistol grip I swapped out for a BCM one that I already had and I really love it in this setup. A lot of the stuff on this rifle is very standard. However, one thing that's not standard is it has a fully ambidextrous controls and that includes the bolt release, mag release, and the safety, which is a really nice at this price point, but just really nice in an AR altogether. The controls, everything on the gun feels like quality. And so I'm very pleased with this purchase. It came in at a great price. I got this gun just under a grand, which is just a phenomenal price point for an AR-10. I've put 200 rounds through this rifle of various ammunition, including reloads, also uh, some SIG ammunition, federal gold medal match, and, and anything that I ran through it, I had zero hiccups. This gun is just incredibly reliable, and you might think this day and age, most guns are reliable, but when it comes to AR-10s, there's a lot of them that can be finicky depending on the type of ammunition that you run, but I had no problems here. Now let's get to the accuracy portion. I shot several groups through this gun and I found that accuracy was very consistent with my best group being under half an MOA and my worst group being just over an MOA. 
but the overall average came in right at about 0.7 to 0.8 MOA, which is phenomenal for a semi-automatic, low-cost AR-10. Hey shooters, here's my group at 360 with the Smith & Wesson MMP-10. Looks like right at three inches for my three-shot group. So that's under one MOA. Slight shift to the right, but we've got a little wind today and I didn't correct it all for it. I was just aiming for the center. Let's talk some of the upgrades that I did to this rifle. Well, as I mentioned, I gave it a custom rattle can job. It, I think it turned out really good. It's some nice flat uh, camo looking paint and it really helps it blend in the environment. I also added a Leupold Delta Point Pro with a 45 offset mount to this gun. I selected to put the Leupold 3x18 Very X5 on top, which is a great rifle, uh, which is a great rifle scope for hunting. But that Delta Point Pro helps out for fast shots or anything up close. All I have to do is cant the rifle 45 degrees, and I've got a red dot that's sighted in out to 100 yards. The trigger on the Smith & Wesson MMP-10 is absolutely garbage. It's mil-spec, but it's definitely on the heavier side of mil-spec. However, if you do any research or if you've shot any of the other popular 308s on the market, including the SCAR and several other more expensive options, essentially all of them have a reputation for having a horrible trigger. So, nothing strange here. The good thing is, is that any of your drop-in AR-15 triggers will work on the Smith & Wesson MMP-10. So I had a Geisley trigger that I transferred from another firearm over to this, and it's perfect. Uh, it gave me all the things I was looking for to have a precision hunting rifle. And it also allowed me to run the gun fairly fast, but... With it being a 308, that's probably less of a concern. You really want a trigger that's going to allow you to shoot accurately. So trigger replacement is a great idea here. And again, probably one for most of the popular offerings on the market. Shooters, all in all, this is a solid buy. If you're in the market for a semi-automatic large caliber AR-10, then you need to check out the Smith & Wesson MMP-10. I looked at several different options, including SCARs and you know, various brands of AR-10s. Several of them were overpriced and really underperformed compared to this rifle. All right, shooters, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and take a second, hit that like and subscribe button to support the channel. And as always, thank you all and God bless.